Hey, welcome back. Last class, we worked with the two types of special right triangles, 30, 60, 90s, and 45, 45, 90s. And I expressed to you the importance of these, the fact that they are arguably like 30 to 40% of next year's math class for you. So you're understanding these content pieces are really important. Um, the work you've got in front of you on the worksheet is just more practice of the same. There's nothing new to be learned today, but I am going to ask you to um, engage a little bit in a warm up, which is actually two of the problems to help you get started on the homework. But before we get to those, let's make sure we remember the rules. These are all pattern based. If I'm dealing with a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and I'm given the side opposite 30, so let's call that A. How big is the hypotenuse? Double that. Double that. Good. 2A. And then how big is this side leg, the other leg? A root 3 is the way we'll describe that. A root 3. And even if that... Come on, guys. Stop talking, please. Even if that triangle is rotated we still have to keep relative to the angles, the same directions. So where do I put the A? On the left, on the bottom, or on the right? In this triangle, I'd look for the 30 degrees and I'd go opposite that. Our basics would say if this is A, then the hypotenuse, the side opposite 90 degrees would be twice that. And the side opposite 60, the middle side would be A root three, smallest, Middlest, largest. Any questions on that setup? That's what we did last class. So in the event that I had, for instance, an eight here for this, what would be my hypotenuse? 16, twice that. And if this were eight, what would be my longer leg? Eight root three, easy peasy. It gets harder when opposite the 60, I'm given a number, like a constant, like 12. So we had a different formula for that because I know that if this is six, for example, I multiply it by root three to get here. But that means if I'm going back the other way, if this is A and I'm trying to find what goes here, how do I get backwards? What's the opposite of multiplying by root three? dividing by root three. So if I want to find out what goes here, really what it is, is it's the A from up here divided by root three. The problem with that is that's not simplified. I can't leave a radical in the denominator of a fraction. So I would have to then simplify or rationalize by multiplying by root three over root three. In this case, that would become A root three over three. Oops. Therefore, if they give you the whole number here on the side opposite 60, your smallest side, the side opposite 30, would be A root 3 over 3. And then if that were A, if that were the smallest side, what would be the biggest side, the hypotenuse? Oh, 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 oh. A, root 3 over 3. Twice that, right? 2 times A root 3 over 3. And when we multiply a whole number like two times a fraction, we treat it as two over one. So we're only multiplying it times the top, not the bottom. And because A and root three are multiplied, we don't have to distribute it. It's not like addition. So this would be two A root three over three. If you don't already have this in your notes, I think having both this basics formula and the extreme version when you're given a integer value opposite 60 are helpful to have. Any questions on these? And they're on the front board for you too. The other triangle we dealt with was a 45, 45, 90. It's a little bit easier because it's isosceles. So if I'm given this side is A, how long is this side? Also A. And what's the hypotenuse? A root two. Not 2A. In fact, a triangle couldn't exist if these two sides were A and the hypotenuse were 2A. It would make a straight line. 
And then the extreme version says, okay, but what if this were the side that were given to you? Well, that would mean that to get back to here, I'd have to divide by root two. So a divided by root two, which again gets rationalized to be a root two over two. So these sides would be a root two over two. Now, for these two warm-up problems we're doing, number 13 and 18 from today's packet, I want you to look at these pictures. Think about which one applies to each of the problems. Please take about five minutes now to try 13 and 18 from today's homework. If you're successful with them, you can move on to do more of the homework because this is just your homework. If you're struggling with them in about five minutes, I'll go over them completely with you. Okay, go now, please. So for this first one, what we're looking at is this, where they gave us a number, they gave us number 17. And that's part of this triangle. Is it my 30, 60, 90 or my 45, 45, 90? It's a 30, 60, 90. So then I ask myself, which version of it is it? Is it the straightforward one where I'm given a whole number where I want it to be, which is either opposite the 30 or opposite the 90? Or is it the challenging one where it's opposite the 60 that I've got my whole number? It's the easy one, right? If this is 17, what's my hypotenuse? Look on the board. The hypotenuse gets twice whatever is opposite it, the 30, right? So if this is 17, this is two times 17, which is 34. And how big is this right-hand side, the leg? Seventeen root three. Okay, so that finishes this. That's all I needed was to get really that thirty-four. That's what I was aiming for. Any questions on that? Now I'm looking at the orange triangle. I know that this side length is thirty-four. Is this a 30, 60, 90 or a 45, 45, 90? 45, 45, 90. So I've got a side length of 34 here. And I know that if these are both 45, then these sides are both the same. So if this is 34, how big is Z? 34. And if these sides are both 34, then I know the hypotenuse must be what? 34 root two. Five, okay, I got that correct. I feel comfortable about it. I could do that next time myself. Three, I needed you to walk me through it, but as you talked about it, it made perfect sense to me. One, something about what you said felt like I just didn't have the, the keys I need to do this. Okay, good. So number 18 is much harder. It's a very similar problem, and yet the particular orientation makes it much harder. So again, they give us this number 20, which means we're starting off with this triangle, 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. 45, 45, 90. But this is not the case where I can do it the easy way, right? It's not A, A, A root two, because I've got a whole number there. So I need to use my extreme version, my harder version, where when I'm given this side of A, these sides become a over two root two. So if I take 20 and plug it in like this, I'm dividing by two and sticking a root two on whatever this side length is. So if this is 20, I put it there. And I can simplify this. What's 20 over two? 10. So this becomes 10 root two. That's the side of Z. And because this is isosceles, if this side is 10 root two, what's this side here? 10 root two also. So now I'm looking at the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And is it the easy version where I'm given the side opposite 30 and these become double and these become a root three? Or is it the harder version where I'm given a whole number opposite 60? And so this becomes a divided by three root three. And this is twice that. Is it the easy or the hard version here? It's hard, extra hard. Because not only are they giving us the number here, 
It doesn't have a root three, but it's got a radical in it. But the idea is the same. To find the opposite to 30, we're gonna use this thing. It's something over three root three. In this case, it's 10 root two that goes in there. So 10 root two times root three, those are both in the radical. So I can call that 10 root six over three. And if the 10 and the three were to cancel, like it was 12 over three, then I could clean that up. But this case, it just doesn't. So this becomes 10 root six over three, and we just leave it like that. And then what's the relationship between the side opposite 30 and the hypotenuse? It gets doubled, whatever it is. If this is A, it gets turned into 2A. So if this is what Y is to get X, I'm just gonna double this. And if I take 10 root six over three times two, this is a fraction. So if I put it over one, I can do the multiplication. So I'm not gonna multiply by the three. Do I have to multiply by the 10 and the root six or just by the 10 or just by the root six? Just by the 10. Think of it like X. If you had 10 X and you multiplied it by two, you would get 20 X, not 20 times two X. You're not gonna double distribute it because it's already being multiplied. So this would be 20 root six over three and that would be the value of X. Okay, any questions on that? Harder, right? But it's mostly about fractions and radical manipulations, not so much about the 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90s. Five, I can do that. It's harder, but I got this. Three, going through it with you, it did seem okay, but I didn't feel like I would be able to do it myself yet. One, I got lost in a couple of steps in what you were doing. Okay, good, good scores. Okay, so you've got the rest of the period to please work on both sides of this worksheet. This is your only homework to get really comfortable working with 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles, including the manipulations necessary to clean up the answers. You've got the period.